Hey! So this is like my first ever booktube bookish video. Woohoo! <laughs> it's been a long time coming and I'm a bit nervous about it, but that's okay. Because, you know, <laughs> anything new comes with a set of nerves. So I guess I can say this is a perfect time to actually do this video because it is Black History Month, number one. And number two, it is National Library Lovers Month. And in this video, I have a bunch of library books, a, a haul of library books that I have here. Sorry, my bag is Lakeshore kiddish. I am a teacher, so yes, I uh, tend to have a lot of children's things, as you can see here, although most of my children's books are here on this shelf. So I am going to separate this haul into um, sections of children's books as well as adult fiction. And the children's books are because, like I said, I am a teacher and I like to grab the books that I'm going to read from the library because I am a big supporter of the library. My parents in my class know that and I love to share the resources that the library offers so that if, they, if one of the children does enjoy the story that I read, I tell them that I found it at the library. They can look at the title and find it through um, the librarians. So, mo yes. The books that I have, some of them that I did get from the library pertain to what we were learning about. So I didn't want to put, include them in this video, but I do have some of the ones that I am excited personally to read. So the first two are basically the same. The first one is Prince's Hair by Cherie Miller and My Hair is Magic by M.L. Marroquin. And both of these are actually promoting and celebrating natural hair from um, in African Americans and children of color. And I love the fact that this one, it's, I kind of peruse them before I actually get them. And the illustrations are awesome. And it talks about the difference um, hairstyles like twist out, dreadlocks, bantu knots. I mean, yes. Yeah, so I'm all for the, uh, the, the, the promotion of natural hair. And this little girl here, right there, look at that big poofy, poofy hair. That's what I'm talking about. And she's like, I own this hair. So I am excited to read these stories, not just for the children in my class, but for myself to gain some self-confidence because we can all use self-confidence despite they're coming from children's books. So I'm excited about that. And I have this story. It's called For Black For Beautiful Black Boys Who Believe in a Better World. And this is by Michael Walters. And I thought this book was going to be excellent for the kids in my class and not just for the children but for their parents because this actually um is like a great conversation starter so it talks about um a little boy who witnessed he doesn't witness personally but of course he sees the news he watches all of the news and everything that's talking about the gun violence and racism in the country. And he asks, he goes to his parents um, just for to understand why. And the parents try to explain, but the, ch the child at each time doesn't want to talk about it. So this is a great book to, um, to have dialogue with your child. So I'm excited to read this. Um, actually, I'm, I'm going to see if I can read it with my son. And so if he has questions or anything like that, I have, I think that would be great for me to sit down and talk with him. And this is a great story to read to children. I know a lot of teachers and parents may not want to talk about what's going on, um, in our country, whether it be gun violence, whether it be COVID, whether it be racism, because just fear of just keeping our kids innocent, but I believe that kids are very much aware of what's going on, and this is a great book to help get those 
discussion and dialogue going. So I can't wait for this. And the little boy, he grows his hair out. And oh my goodness, look at those pictures. I love it. I love the pictures. I love seeing the growth in his hair. And I don't know if I can say that the growth in his hair symbolized the growth of just learning about what's going on. But yes, I'm excited for this one. And the last one, it kind of, this one is Baba's song and it kind of goes with what we're learning about in class. We're talking about music and music making. And this is about a little boy, Bernardi, and his grandfather, Babu, who sells toys. And his grandfather gives him this special magic music box and they go through the struggle because, of course, the music box is something um, that is special to both the grandfather and his son, grandson. And his grandson actually sells it. Um, so I can't wait to see just that relationship between a grandfather and a son. And this book also takes place in Tanzania. So I love to read books of, from other places in the world. And yeah. And this also along with the other books, are a great um, representation of, you know, Black people and people of color. So I'm excited to read these, but not just for my class, but for myself, to just gain some more knowledge. So my next set of books are books for myself that I am anxiously waiting, waiting to read. So two of them I got because I am looking to escape and one of my favorite time periods is World War II. And so I got these two books, We Must Be Brave by Frances Lyardit. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce her name. And All the Ways We Said Goodbye by Beatrice Williams. This book I saw on um, a review and I was like, I don't wanna read what it's about. I just love the cover and I saw high praise. So I was like, I'm gonna read it. This one, We Must Be Brave, is I went to the librarian, actually, and I said, I need a book about World War II or set in that time frame, some historical fiction, something, because I need an escape. And yes, I am a reader who reads escape reality. <laughs> so, and yes, so this book, she didn't give it to me. Uh, she requested books and told me, to um that she was going to request them and i was going to pick them up of other books i believe one was the nightingale and i'm not sure of the other one but i just started wandering the library and this one got caught my eye and i picked it up and all i saw i saw was the inside and i said saw so, december 1940 as german bombs fall on southampton england the residents flee the surrounding flee to surrounding villages and then in uptown upton village amid the chaos newly married ellen parr finds a girl asleep and claimed at the back of an empty bus little little pamela it seems is entirely alone so she yeah so when i saw that i knew it was the world war ii uh, era and i was like i got to get this i don't know what it's about but it's okay I tend to I tend to not want to know what a book is about. I'm a little weird about that because I feel like if I find out what the book is about and I kind of read the synopsis, I tend to, if I'm like, oh, I'm not feeling it, I might miss a really good book that I might enjoy. So, and the cover is gorgeous. Yes, I am a lover of World War II. Don't know why, but that 1930 to 19. 40s, 50s time frame is like my time frame. So I love it. And going alongside past reading, this book, it is by Betty Smith, A Tree Grows in Brooklyn. Okay, so let me tell you, one of my favorite books, one of my favorite books, because I have lots of them, is Joy in the Morning by Betty Smith. And I got this from, I believe, a yard sale or a church sale or something where I got this book for like a dollar or something and the lady told me she's like you have to read this book and I'm like whatever and when I picked it up oh my gosh I devoured it in like two days so I love Betty Smith's writing I love how she creates her characters I 
every time I read her books, I fall in love with her characters. I read Joy in the Morning several times, and I've read, um, oh my goodness, do not make me forget. Oh my gosh, I am like going to have like a conniption fit right now. Oh, I can't remember her, her latest book, and I don't see it on here. It's probably in my room. But tomorrow will be better. That's what it's called. Tomorrow will be better. And when I read that, I fell in love with the characters. So my coworker told me this was her favorite book. And I was reading several other books that referenced this book. And then I saw like everybody, I looked on Goodreads, of course, and I saw that this book does get high praise. Yes, it is set back in the 1920s, but I don't care. The way she writes, Betty Smith writes, is amazing. I think if she's not one of my top favorite authors, she's probably my top three. One of the top author that I love is Miss Queen Toni Morrison. And to me, her writing comes close to Toni Morrison's. But I love this book and I can't wait to read. And my last book that I got from the library, sorry, pardon my note, is The Joy Luck Club. And this is by Amy Tan. And I saw this book on the PBS series, The Great American Reads. And oh my gosh, one of the, the ladies who spoke about this book was saying, first of all, it's own voices. And just the um, relationships between mother and daughter and family. I was like, yes, I'm going to read it. And these women actually meet together for a ma, ma jung, not pronounce, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly, ma jung game. And they start meeting and they develop this bond between the ladies. And I am trying to read a lot more diverse, not just by only um, black voices, but own voices, period, of different um cultures and different places so I'm excited I heard nothing but good news about this book and I'm excited to read it so those are actually all of my books that I got this library trip if this becomes a thing on my channel I will do more excuse me library hauls I live at the library um I'm sad that it's not the same because of COVID um, because the library is one of my safe spots. So um, if you get anything from me, I am a big supporter of the library. And if you can support your local library through ebooks, audiobooks, e electronic resources, or going to your library, I suggest you doing it. I know some people's libraries aren't open um, in person, that you can either request items and you know you can pick them up. Or, you know, you can use your um, e-electronic books and things like that. So I've been using audiobooks and the e-books from Hoopla and Overdrive, and I enjoy it. So I always say support your local library. At every trip, I get my checkout, and I love the fact that they put on how much money I save from the library because I am... I don't want to say cheap, but I am very thrifty and I like to save money. And I'm not saying not to buy books because, of course, you can see I have books that I, I buy with my own money. But the fact that I can help save money, save the environment a little bit, not just buying books just to hoard. So I love the fact that I can save some money by going to the library. And I have this thing where I like want to know how much money I saved. I don't know if anybody does that, but I do that. I coupon. And I, when I shop, I know a lot of times it says like, you saved $30, you know, and I love seeing how much money I saved. I don't know why I do that. It must be just the, the thriftiness in me. But this trip, I saved $134.86. And this year from January 1st until now, I saved $341.68. So that's actually pretty good. Then, over the last four years, now this number probably could be higher because I don't know if they include 
the electronic resources that I use, that I take, um, which is like if I um, request things on overdrive, like ebooks or audiobooks or Hoopla. But I saved in the last four years ten thousand eight hundred and twenty one dollars and five cents. And I should take this to my husband and I'm like, see, look. This is why I go to the library, because if I actually bought all the books that I do read when I get to the library, that's how much money I would be, you know, spending. So I love the fact that I get, you know, you get the savings on here to help save money. I don't know. Maybe I'm just weird like that. I am a weird, I am a weird one. So, yes. So if, like I said, if this becomes a thing, I will continue to upload more bookish videos. I am excited and I'm most likely I'm going to try and upload some reviews on those children's books because that one um, for the beautiful black boys, oh my gosh, that that looks like it's going to touch my soul. And I believe that when I do read it to my class, it will get conversation starting, um, not just with the children, but with the parents. So I'm excited for this. I don't know how well I did on this first video. If you enjoyed, just comment and say, nice job, <laughs> nice job. Not that I need praise, not that I need any type of accolades or anything like that, but this is my first ever video and it was a bit nervousing, nerve wracking a little bit, um, but I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless you. And if you find any time today, I hope you pick up a book and you read. And I will see you guys hopefully later. Bye.